Hi everyone! We are continuing to build foundations of probability theory. Last time, we introduced the basic setting in which we will study any probability problem. That setting is an experiment. For instance, flipping a coin twice. An experiment may result in one or more possible outcomes. For instance, a head head or a head tail and so on and so forth. The set of all possible outcomes, anything that can happen in this experiment is called the sample space and is denoted capital S. In this experiment of flipping the coin twice, the sample space consists of four possible outcomes. Subsets of the sample space are called events. For instance, an event could be getting the head exactly once, in which case it is this subset. We can visualize by looking at S as the square, the universe of all possible outcomes. And there are also subsets, such as this one, E. Today we will study operations on events. Imagine that you learned numbers for the first time, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. You're excited and say, great, what do we do with these numbers? Well, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. These are operations or numbers. Similarly, one can combine and break down events using the three basic operations. They are union, intersection, and complement. Chances are you already know them from someplace else. If you don't, we'll review them now, and you also can go to the link provided to look into more about operations on sets. So here's our definition. Consider events E and F, and remember there are subsets of S, which I denote by this sign. We say that E implies F if for any outcome in E, that outcome is also in F. This letter stands for any, and this is belongs to. The Venn diagram can illustrate that effect. Here is an event E, and here is an event F. E is included in F. We say that E and F are the same events, or E equals F, if E is included in F and F is included in E. They include each other. Either both events occur or both don't occur. The intersection of the two events, E and F, is the set of all outcomes S from the sample space that belong to both E and F. We can visualize the intersection as the common part of the two sets. This is E, this is F, and this is the intersection. E intersection F stands for E and F occur at the same time. We say that the two events E and F are disjoint, or more often we say mutually exclusive, that's the same, if the intersection is empty. This means that E and F may not occur simultaneously, ever. There is no common part. The union of the two events, E and F, consists of all outcomes that are either in E or in F. We say in this case that E or F occurs, or both occur. This is a non-exclusive or. The Venn diagram for these two sets looks like this. This is E and this is F. And the union is everything here. The complement of an event E consists of all outcomes that are not in E. And that letter means does not belong to. 
this event means that E does not occur. And the Venn diagram for this event looks like this. Everything that's outside E is the E complement. The difference of the two events consists of all outcomes that are in E, but not in F. This can also be written as the intersection of E with the complement of F. So th these are the outcomes that are in E and not in F. If this is E and this is F, then everything that's in E but not in F is the set difference. These are the basic set operations or operations on events. Now let's consider examples. Example one, flip the coin twice. The sample space, as we know, consists of four outcomes, four possible ways the two coins can come up. Let's look at these two events. E is that the head comes up once, and F is that the tail comes up once. In this case, actually, it is the same event. E and F are the same. They just consist of the two outcomes, TH and HT, because only then, only for these two outcomes, do we have the tail only once, equivalently the head only once. Example two. Let's record the first 911 call today at a police station. It can happen anywhere between zero, the midnight, and the next midnight, 24 hours. So the sample space of all possible times is the interval between zero and 24. Consider these two events. E is that the first call happens after 2 p.m. and F is that the first call happens before 3 p.m. What would be the intersection of these two events? In this case, the first call must happen after 2 p.m. and by 3 p.m. And that means that the first call happens between 2 and 3 p.m. So in the interval notation, this is just the interval between 2 and 3. Example three, let's toss two dice, the cubes with dots on them, the number of dots is between one and six, and outcome is just a pair of the numbers. So the sample space, all possible outcomes are all possible pairs of numbers, each of which is between one and six. Let's look at these two events. E is that the sum of the two dice is at least 10, and f, the sum of the two dice is at least 5. In this case, one of these events implies the other. Which one? E implies f. Because if the sum is at least 10, it's automatically at least 5. Example 4. Let's record the sex of the children in the family. Any family may either have no children, which I denote by n, or has one boy, or maybe has just one girl, or maybe there are two boys in the family, or a boy and a girl in the family, and so on and so forth. Let's look at these two events. E is the family has just two boys. And F is that the family has just two girls. This event consists of the single outcome BB, and this event consists of the single outcome GG. So these two events, E and F, don't have any common part. They are mutually exclusive. E and F are mutually exclusive events. What would be the union of E and F? The union consists of all outcomes that are either in E 
or in F or both. So this will be BB and GG. That's the event in which we have two children of the same sex. We just learned operations on two events, E and F, but we can include more for multiple events. We can also consider the intersection of the N events denoted this way is the event in which all EIs must occur simultaneously. And similarly, the union of multiple events that we denote this way is the event in which at least one EI occurs, either E1 or E2 or E3 and so on and so forth. The important thing to remember is that the intersection correspond to the logical operation and E1 must occur and E2 occur and E3 occur. That's what intersection means. And the union corresponds to the logical operation or E1 occurs or E2 occurs or E3 occurs and so on. Let's look at this example. A student by the rules set by the university qualifies for a financial aid if he or she passes both English and finance classes. So the qualification event, U, is the intersection of the students passing English and finance. Now suppose we learn that R gets disqualified from the financial aid. It means that she must have failed either English or finance, or maybe both. You can write it as the complement of the qualification, so disqualification, that will be Q complement, equals failure of English or failure of finance, or both. We can express these two equations as E intersection F, that's Q complement, equals E complement, union F complement. So the complement operation turns the intersection into a union. Similarly, the complement operation turns the union into intersection. So these two equations hold for any events E and F, and they are called De Morgan laws. They are very important and will be applied throughout this course. In logical terms, the negation of and is or, and the negation of or is and. More generally, De Morgan's laws apply to multiple events the complement to the intersection is the union, and the complement to the union is intersection. Here's an example. Suppose a coffee maker consists of n components. It works if and only if all the components work, which we may denote by saying that it works if all of the components, so the intersection of all of the components, WI, work. What does it mean for the coffee maker to fail? The coffee maker fails if and only if the common mistake will be to say all components fail, but that's not true. The coffee maker fails if at least one component fails. And we can write it as the complement of working, which is a failure, is the union, at least one corresponds to the union of the failure of the components. We went over basic operations on sets, and next time, we'll finally define probability.
Have fun.